G'day prospectors, Tony from Gold Talk Leonora here in Flytown. <sighs> I'm uh, very, very, very rarely have a fly net on. At the moment I do. I reckon if you can avoid coming to the gold fields for a week or two, I would. <laughs> Till it cools off a bit. It's just because we had all that rain uh, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and that means there's lots of grass everywhere. It's sort of looking like the MCG over there at the moment. Not that I've ever been there, but I imagine that's what it looks like. And um, something exactly like that. And uh, because once you've got all the grass on the ground, it means you've got uh, food and breeding posies for all the mosquitoes and all the flies. So the ground's pretty much dried out now. There's a there's a few, few areas east of town, sort of Redcastle way that are still a bit doughy in spots but most of it's all right if you're just careful as i said it's beautiful weather blue skies um maybe 28 30s nice cool nights things are looking good so we've been busy we've been uh we were down uh, down in mandra doing the uh, training courses we had um had a bloody hoot down there it was so much fun um plenty of um, old friends to catch up with and plenty of new friends to make so had a really really good time um, we went on one of these dolphin cruises and I thought well I'll just mention that the it was a it was a dolphin cruise out on the in the estuary or something there so it's on a boat and I thought oh you know dolphin cruise hunting type thing I thought great because I've always wanted to know what a dolphin tastes like I mean you know it's a big food source there's plenty of them um, and I don't really want to go to Japan. I don't have a passport and no interest to go to the country. So anyway, uh, it wasn't to be. Uh, what it was was hunting them down in the boat and then taking photos of them and sort of 50 or 80 people on board going, ooh, ah, isn't that nice? And it was nice, actually. It was a beautiful day and good people. Uh, until the dolphins got frisky, it turned into something I didn't expect. It turned into a a dolphin porno cruise of sorts and uh, yeah no it's interesting um it, it, they were frisky and they were uh they were you know doing things they were horizontally folk dancing in the water as it were bumping uglies as it were um and uh, yeah anyway look it was pretty full on there for a bit you know a few few bloke dolphins and one sheila dolphin and 50 or 70 people on board not knowing whether to stare and take lots of photos or look away because it was all a bit embarrassing but um, they stared and took lots of photos so that's where we went with that one so anyway dolphin hunting not a bad pastime um, the great thing here is this is the project we're on before we went down to the big smoke um, the main patch which is there has decreased in in numbers um and that's okay it's, it always will but interestingly and i've done a couple of sample cuts down over here a little bit deeper with the dozer down a couple of foot and whilst i didn't get any gold the the geology is still exactly the same um so that that means we keep digging um even if we're not getting any gold for a while but basically now what i'll do daisy um daisy teaspoons is all back up and running again and looking resplendent uh, with a beautiful um, tidied up ram thanks to Tracy down at Billet Engineering in Kalgoorlie uh, new cooling system uh, new window uh, a bit of a tidy up of some oil leaks so she's looking pretty good now uh, for an old girl it's um, getting her just about where I want it and anyway so Daisy will probably come out this week and I'll just start being a little bit more thorough here and drop this pad down by a foot overall in the main area, detect it, another foot, and just see what's going on. Dig a couple of deep holes to see how deep the geology goes. Hopefully if we can get another six foot out of it or so, you know, wouldn't that be bloody marvellous? And well worth spending the diesel to see if we can pick up anything uh, of a good size. Um, all the gold here has been small and that never worries me um, I always encourage people to chase small gold the uh, the glory pieces are nice but they're few and far between and my logic always is that the you know you concentrate on the small stuff 
and the big stuff will find you. Uh, big stuff, unless it's lying up near the surface, um, it'll sound like a tin can anyway. Um, big stuff usually starts off like a small, small sounding little fairy fart and develops. So if you concentrate on finding the little stuff, you, the big stuff will find you. So that's just my little tip for the season, is don't worry about the deep stuff. Um, so what we've done here, as I said before we left, because we've sort of pushed, uh, doing a scrape and detect, it means we've stockpiled dirt. And uh, I would just go for a walk up there, might as well. And uh, that's, we got lucky with that. The, the thing is that with dirt, it's, um, I don't know what the right way to describe it. It's sort of amazing insulation properties almost. So if you, like I've done here, I stockpiled dry dirt. It was drier than a nun's nasty. So that was all stockpiled. And that means only the outside, even though we had quite a bit of rain, only the outside, I don't know, two, three, four inches gets soaked. And that's what needs to dry. Uh, sometimes when we're at sort of a bottom of a hill, uh, you know, the water will um, uh, sort of load up on the on that side and underneath through sort of capillary action. But um, either way, if you stockpile the dirt dry, uh, you're pretty right. Um, so it's a couple of weeks I've left it uh, and I'll probably leave it another full week. All right, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, what I did also is I come up here with the dozer. Oopsies. Oh, look at the view. There's Lisa over there chipping away. Uncle Brian, goosebumps. Green paddocks, flies. Oh, shit, loads of flies. They're bad. Anyway, so I come up here with goosebumps and I just sort of roughly push the top off, push the crown off, and that gives us lots of surface area here. We can, um, the sun can get into it, the warmth can get into it, and just dry it all out. The dirt, the dirt doesn't need to be, I mean, you can't have dirt that's damp no doubt about that but the dirt can be heavy it can have a moisture content and even though she'll run a bit slower um, she'll still run so anyway this is all uh, I'm sort of hoping very good dirt here because this is off the main patch which is right there and uh, we'll get all this through tiny and then see what we're what we've got at the end of it and which way we're working we definitely need to go deeper here we're sort of Funny things are happening up where Lisa is. We had a couple of outside runs there where we got basically nothing, bit of background value. But just where Lisa's working now, we've picked up another line. And we don't know whether it's relating to this one, but I, my gut feeling is, my, my little hypothesis that I'm working on is we've got another one cutting across this way and sort of going under where, where Goosebumps is. I mean, you don't know, but all you can do is Right, so we picked up quite a few where Lisa is now. So we open up the area, we plot them all on the GPS and start looking for the pattern. That's the, the way we do it anyway. And usually works and uh, hopefully we get, um, we get it right. So anyway, we, uh, we'll get on with the day's activities, prospectors. I hope, that, um, I hope that you're gearing up for a big season. I hope that you're excited about it. You bloody should be. I think it's um, with gold at uh, 3,500 an ounce. Um, all you got to do is the simple thing, just go out and find it. How hard can that be? And look at this ground. The other interesting thing here, just while I'm waffling on incessantly, is we've hit some gypsum. Um, very hard for me to show you in the with the camera, but you may pick up sort of things glistening in the in the windrows here and that's a little gypsum crystals now interestingly gypsum is um, you get different colors of it and it's good because it's usually associated with hyperthermal veining activity which you know um, also counts for a lot of the gold around here um, but the interesting thing is 
if you ask anyone they'll say ah oh, gypsum doesn't carry gold it's no good hang on let's see if i can pick this little bugger up oh. hey. don't know if you can see that little crystal there all right it's quite brittle all right that's gypsum now as I said, they'll, the rock lickers will all say, oh, there's no gold in gypsum, it's no good for you, avoid it. And nothing could be further from the truth. From a prospector's perspective, gypsum means dig. All right, we've found some significant gold under gypsum. All right, so gypsum means dig. Doesn't mean there's going to be gold there, but uh, I would not be stopping uh, once we hit gypsum. So we've hit a very nice area of brown brown gypsum through here and that's another piece of the puzzle. I mean it doesn't doesn't pay the fuel bills but it says keep going tone. That's what it says to me. See if we can find the find the bits we're really chasing. Alright prospectors we'll see you out here soon. Enjoy the flies. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy life. And remember those dolphins, they're dirty fuckers, they really are. They like I'm pretty broad-minded, but man, they were going for it. <sighs> See you prospectors, safe out in the bush. Bye.